Greetings subscribers and other curious people. As you may notice, I'm dressed slightly differently from my usual dress when recording these things. To the extent you can say this usual dress when I believe this is the third one I have done, if you don't count the poems. Now, and there is a reason for this that I will get to slightly later in my rambling way, unless I head off into the highways and byways and never actually get there, as happened with the subsequent reasons why I don't vlog in my why I don't vlog vlog. But anyway, I was watching Lex Croucher's Just a Few Autumn Things which I discovered via Garrett Robinson. He's got terrible taste in coffee, but his writing's great, so check him out. And Lex was talking about the use of fall rather than autumn. Now, the first thing I thought of was that the use of autumn rather than fall is a fairly modern British invention. If you check your Shakespeare, he called it fall because the leaves fell, so I don't think we can blame the Americans for that one. But what you did point out was that we don't call spring the flowers are out but I'm dead inside, which made me think of goth. Now, I used to be a goth. I might be a goth in the future. And those of you who are familiar with old school goth will realise that that was a deliberate attempt to avoid the recursive entry requirement. This goth is possibly the only subculture that draws its entry test from Epinides of Knossos. Now, those of you who didn't go to a school where the correct angle to wear a top hat at was just one of those things you learnt, might not have occurred. Met him? So uh, Epimenides of Knossos posed the paradox that all Cretans are liars. Being a Cretan himself, obviously this means that then he is lying. But if he is saying all Cretans are liars, and so on and so forth. And so old school goth had the entry requirement. If you say you're a goth, you're not a goth. Now, my way around that when I was a goth was to agonize about it intensely. My way around it now, when I might continue to be a goth and I might be a goth in the future, is to go, meh, bothered because fundamentally I'm just as gothic wearing a sweater as I am wearing the cravat and top hat. But what I also am when wearing the sweater as opposed to the cravat and top hat is someone who after he's finished recording can go and finish cleaning the bathroom while I wait for YouTube to upload the video. Which brings me, in a kind of rambling way, back to my original thought about why the flowers are out but I'm dead inside made me think of goth. Because it's a joke about goths being depressed, but arguably the gothic subculture is about exactly the opposite of that. It's instead of the flowers are out but I'm dead inside, it's the flowers are dead, but I'm blooming inside. That dead flowers are only depressing because we're culturally conditioned to see them as sad, depressing, the ending of things. Whereas in fact, as anyone under the age of four will tell you, everything is exciting. Decaying plant matter, excrement, two bunnies wrestling in a field. It's all interesting and exciting. So 
goth is actually not about being sad and depressed. It's about seeing the beauty in things that aren't ordinarily, culturally signifiers of joy and happiness. And anyone who's been to a goth club will see that goths are potentially determined to be happy and joyful, really. Any subculture that goes, well, we'll wear six layers of leather and PVC and worsted and tweed and hats that really don't have proper ventilation in summer. And then we'll go to an enclosed room and bounce up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down while listening to very frenetic music is probably more determined than your standard clubber to get the maximum amount of joy out of their dancing. Now, so I've just said that what goth is, but of course it isn't. Goth can also be about sitting in the corner and being depressed. Goth can be about not just a rebellion against society's perception of beauty, but a rebellion about having to clean your bedroom or about not fitting in. So you choose to deliberately make yourself look other. I don't know why Marilyn Manson is doing it, but I can see how Marilyn Manson could be an icon for people who don't fit in. So instead of trying to conform, go the other way and raise their middle finger to society, going, well, you don't want me, that's okay. I'm part of something that really doesn't fit. And this is why I call these things ramblings, because there isn't really much of a point to this, apart from me having seen something and sparking off in an odd train of conjectures and realising that fundamentally there is a strong connection between the goth movement and Vedayaya Tantra. Not the sexual bit, the fundamental interconnectedness bit of Tantric Sutras. The idea that each thing is uniquely itself, so can't be judged by the standards of any other thing, but also is connected to every other thing. So the reason we can't judge a thing by another thing's standards is that there is bleeding at the edges. A single sheep is sort of an example of sheep. But if you take any one real sheep, it's not identical to another sheep. So it isn't a perfect way of saying this thing is a sheep. Things that are not this thing are not sheep because it doesn't fit for other sheep. And so you end up with this flock of sheep, each of which are different. And then you get, well, a picture of a cartoon sheep. Is that a sheep? It doesn't fulfill any of the requirements of being a sheep, apart from looking sort of like a sheep according to our cultural expectations. So I should probably dribble off there because I've rambled myself kind of into a corner. So, toodaloo.